Sofa Squad, I am glad that y'all are here for me today because let me tell you what. I was under the weather for a couple of days and when I came back up from my little under the weather world and I started seeing the stuff popping off in the true crime world, I was like, oh, no, girl. The cherry on top, though, was, and I'm going to be reading it from here, was them releasing, unsealing this letter from Leticia Stalk. And I was like, oh, my word. Leticia is P.O.'d and she is writing a letter to the manager. And on that note, 100%, she is the type to go, she wants regional manager level stuff over basic, basic things. Expired coupons, something that she probably broke in the store, but wants it for free now. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read through this and I'm going to be making a few comments throughout and I can't promise that they won't be sarcastic. Now, the inner person in me that likes to do impersonations, wants to read this in my typical voice like hey judge man dee, 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 dee. i'm gonna try not to go there i don't know why i do this it's a character it's a, it's another personality but if i do slip into that zone just know that i'm channeling some version of leticia okay judge warner dated february 21st 2021 not that long ago on 2-19-2021, I was unable to talk with Judge Bain about my conflicts with my defense team due to number one, the actual privacy of the booth and the transport over. I explained in detail to him, expressing my concerns of privacy. Two, I had a very difficult morning mentally because I am not mentally well. Uh, honey, you didn't need to put that in the letter. Okay, that's just the canvas for all this. We got, we already know that girl. One of the main issues with my attorneys is their lack of ability to gather evidence. Due to this, I find little value in the term expert. First, they were unable to obtain my mental health records from Charleston, South Carolina. When I finally paid a firm in South Carolina to obtain them. In 2016, I was diagnosed with redacted. She doesn't, she ain't got redacted, but they redacted whatever it is there. I would give literally good money to know what that word is right there. Because I'm sure, and I'm sure people out there know what it is. Somehow y'all figured it out doing your whole internet thing. Drop it in the comments if you know. Because here's the thing. She would have you believe that it would be something that's like, bless her heart. How has she lived with that? But it's probably something like completely benign. Not benign, but something that's just like, girl, take some Tylenol and move on. You know what I'm saying? I'll start with the beginning of that sentence again since I went off on a tangent. In 2016, I was diagnosed with fill in the blank and received treatment before work for over 28 hours of care. The school district even provided extra services and later let me medically resign due to the ongoing reality breaks. Can we all say amen that <laughs> this school, number one, that she didn't ever get to that part of that, okay? They saw that train wreck coming a mile away and they're like, it's okay, girl. Go on and sign those papers. We're going to let you do that medical, you know, thing you want to do. Retirement, whatever. It's all good. I'm sure reality breaks were just a part of a larger picture with her. In 2018, I was hospitalized in Canada, crossing the border for two days and completed more treatment when I returned. I tell you this because it sets the stage for why I cannot work with my attorneys. I signed release forms for them to get all this information so they would have a better understanding of why I am all over the place some days. I asked them to use the info from a non-biased doctor who worked with me for more than two hours. Bless that doctor's heart. I'm sure they were ready to literally turn their license in. But instead, they sent a lady who was clearly an actress and friends with the DA. She spoke about him in an unprofessional manner, their history, and his election. Now, I'm sure all this was true, but I thought she worked for the court. Not one particular side. My attorneys did this to make me look like a perjurous individual. No, I, I think you pretty much did a good job on your own of that, but hey, whatever gets you through the day. Instead, it was malfeasance on their part. I think I broke that word up. I don't know. I have included several reasons to support my claim as I kept a timeline of these conflicts. Numero uno, communication is broken beyond repair. 
I've explained these issues to Judge Bain, including the lack of access and visitations, in complete detail. Inconsiderate of evidence. Since March 2020, I asked my attorneys to preserve the GameStop footage, to locate the Texas police officer whom I spoke with, and to get the crew's passenger list. Instead, they spent months contacting my family for mitigation. When asked certain things, they kept saying they will let the investigators know. One year later, same answer, my evidence. I haven't physically seen any while being held at CJC for one year. Yes, COVID, but inmates were still being held as our constitutional rights were adjusted. I love how she's so concerned about her constitutional rights and I'm like, what about Gannon's? Overlooking statue and evidence. They overlooked the competency statue about video recording. Human error? Hmm. Okay, but this happens often with evidence in which me, the non-expert by the way, has to provide corrections to evidence. Sharing info. They were texting my family and giving them info that they should not have, causing several disputes. My judge. They filed that motion knowing this county would not grant me new attorneys to sabotage my chances of a trial by judge. They knew I wanted to present evidence to him without exposing any info on my son's father. However, they created incorrect conflicts instead of addressing the real issues. They could have filed the pro se only instead of talking about my defense to sabotage my trial by judge. The paranoia that she exhibits in this and the entitlement is, I'm not gonna even say shocking at this point anymore because it's normal for her. I would be more shocked if that wasn't present. I would be more shocked if she took accountability in here. I'd, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, that's weird. Defenses. Indeed, I am innocent, but I will not put myself or others in danger running the defense against my biological son when the system is letting two men run free who are involved. One is a prominent member of an independent business. They use the NGRI to get a hearing knowing I am not guilty to cover up their lack of representation. Although I had bouts of insanity and still do, I did not murder or abuse anyone, nor would that be a defense because it's my understanding that you actually did do it. However, I will protect my bio son and I will protect the drugs and violence documented from my stepson. The truth is the court is holding the wrong person and for the wrong crimes. This whole process has been nefarious from denying me an attorney, threatening me in the bathroom, away from cameras to confess, taking advantage of me being delusional, threatening my other kids freedom or else. I am going to keep making it known just how much the state has done in this wrongful incarceration. And see, that's the part right there that I'm just like, eh, yeah, um, this is not normal. It doesn't even sound convincing. I mean, I'm just like, girl, okay, first of all, we are going from peanut butter conversations, attacking officers, um, you name it, you know, to now we're coming up with some like, I mean, uh, Someone needs to take the books away she's reading because I just feel like she's getting little bits and pieces from different things and putting this together. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, this whole conspiracy theory thing, I mean, it's just, it's, no. I just, no, I'm sorry. Also, the continual sympathy she's looking for, nobody, no, it's just, sorry. I will continue to be an advocate for myself because I am not a murderer, and the level that the prosecution goes through to promote a wrongful conviction is absurd. Truth is, they could see a video from someone else and they would dismiss that person as a lunatic. They have far too much invested in this wrongful incarceration to admit they were our wrong. For these reasons, and because my defense team is in cahoots with them, I am left with no other choice but to represent myself. Deny me my rights under the Constitution has happened throughout this process from the detectives, the jail, and now my legal team. Every day I'm getting worse mentally due to inadequate representation and being held hostage for a crime I didn't commit. These are my conflict issues and my reason for asking to go pro se. As always, thank you for your time. So y'all, she's totally crazy. Okay, we all know this. She's totally crazy. She knows what she did. And here's the thing. So obviously this came before we know she's representing herself at this point. You know, 
this right here, again, the sympathy she looks for, which she's done from the get-go, and, and was quite defiant and entitled to that sympathy. You know, we'll remember when they couldn't find him and she's doing the interviews on TV and stuff. But, I mean, this is just, like, batshit right here. I'm just like, what are you talking about? talking about you know the audacity she has something in her mind that she thinks is some bombshell type evidence we don't know what it is y'all it's gonna be something stupid we do know that much though okay it's not gonna be any of the stuff she's talking about here we we know this it's going to get thrown out or thrown away like immediately you know what i mean like the day one after opening statements her bombshell thing is thrown out and so i think she's also trying to line herself up for Look, I'm going to be like a martyr, almost. Like, in her world, she's like, I'm going down to protect the greater good. You know, and it's just like, honey, mm -mm, no. Get down off the cross. We need the damn wood over here, honey. So, y'all, that's it. Thank you for listening to my little rendition of Leticia. I need to go burn some sage and bleach my eyes out now. If you want to watch more of my stuff, just click the videos that are popping up. Thank you to all of the viewers, the watchers, the subscribers, the Sofa Squad. You make it possible. I thank you. And guess what? Till next time, I'll see you then.